Hi, I'm Sarah Snook and I'm here with Harper's Bazaar UK to talk all things Succession. I think Succession is, it's a family drama and a comedy, but in the way that like Dante's Inferno is a comedy, it's not a, you know, it's pretty dark. My first reaction seeing the script was, I really wanted to know what happened to the characters at the end, but I was also like, I don't, know why I'm going in for Shiv, I'm not Shiv, I don't know how to play this character. She's very different from me, so I think I was, um, yeah, intimidated. Shiv is a prickly kind of character and a very specific kind of taste, I guess. I do like her, I have to like her, I love her. Uh, and I've learned a lot from her. You know, I can cast judgment on her as well as a, as a person, but as an actor, I, I definitely love her. Shiv and I are very different, I think. People tend to say that Matthew and I are the um, least like our characters on set, and that makes me happy. Um, because <laughs> she's a lot of hard work. I think I wouldn't be friends with her in real life. I think Shiv has some redeemable qualities. Shiv has been shown to be very manipulative and as an actor, I can look at that and go, yeah, that's not a great uh, position to take and you should be for women. In episode, uh, episode nine of season two, she, she um, does some questionable maneuvering of, of, uh, of another character. And for me, playing that is just really fun. You have to block out what um, what the right thing to do is, what the um, the good thing to do is. People judge Shiv so much more than they judge Kendall or Roman or, or even Logan, you know, like Shiv for some reason is held, well, I know what the reason is, because she's a woman, is held to a higher standard where she's meant to be nice and she's meant to be um, uh, loyal and she's meant to be um, fidelitous. The brothers, weirdly, talk about the people that Shiv has slept with more than ever before. And it's so, it's such a base kind of put down because who cares? She's a, she is invested in and engaged with her own sexuality. She's perfectly has the right to do that. I would like to see Shiv um, reach the top that she can get to, like the highest pinnacle. And then also I want to see her plummet because that's fun to play as like an actor, that's like, playing both sides, the light and shade, the, the dark and the complex. Have I learnt anything from Shiv's sense of style? I've learnt from Shiv's wardrobe, but also from, you know, obviously the costume designer, Michelle, who's, who's brilliant. And really a lot of the time it's, it's buy bigger, tailor down. And that, I think, as a, as a hot tip for all the curvy ladies out there, that's the thing I do. Cause I've got like a little waist and it's like you try on clothes and like, oh, it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. Oh, oh. And you get really depressed, but actually it doesn't fit because you weren't the model that they made this particular pair of pants for and that's perfectly reasonable and fine. And Shiv's outfits, they're great. And I, I really enjoy wearing, um, you know, the corporate wardrobe and, and feeling very powerful and no nonsense in that kind of way. But it's it, a little tricky sometimes in that you know, we had a year off almost between shooting second and third season and I had to come back and put these clothes on. I was like, I don't know who played Shiv, but it wasn't me. I don't know what I'm doing wearing these clothes. The dynamic between the family members on set and us as characters, there's, there is a similarity, I guess, and how we relate to each other in some ways. There's a very much of a sibling vibe between Kieran and I, for instance. Um, who plays Roman. And I guess part of having that chemistry offset really in, in, imbues the, the characters and the life that we have on set together. And you can play off that and trust each other to, to you know work together in the ways that are inventive and creative and it's really fun. I am most like, I think, in the family. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, because I have an enormous amount of sympathy for all of the characters. No one should, first of all, no one should be that rich, but also no one should have a father raising and raising them like that. And, you know, there's such a problematic dynamic in their family. And in some ways they would have to, each would have to remove themselves entirely from their family dynamic and, and the society that they're enmeshed in, in order to do better. And they're never going to do that. So I have sympathy for them, but it also stops at a certain point. I did a, one of those uh, internet um, quizzes that said, who are, you, who are you in the Roy family? And I did that thinking and hoping that I would get Shiv. And I got Greg. 
So. <laughs> Oh, I think the most surreal filming experience was definitely uh, the yacht. We were on a super yacht in Croatia and just come down from the top deck and, and you know, you're swanning about in your costume with your big hat on and in, in makeup and it was amazing. And then also like, I don't know whether this is just the, you know, the Australian in me, but I would always bring my swimmers, like my bathers to set so that when we left the great big boat and took our tiny little boat, I would always like get into my Cost, swimming costume before leaving so that the transport guy on the way back would um, would stop at somewhere where he thought, oh, I'd like to show you this place now. And so we could just jump off the boat. For the most part, it was just me jumping off the boat. Right. <laughs> I think my favorite scene to shoot probably was the one um, in episode 10, season two, where we sat around the um, table and tried to throw each other under the bus. We shot so many takes of that and each one was like just slightly different and each time it felt the stakes were super high, which was really fun to, to know that there's something about to happen that's gonna, like you've got the egg that you're just about to explode. <laughs> egg bomb, I guess. <laughs> I don't think it was scripted what was meant to happen at the end of the scene. The, the scene sort of had you know, a natural end. Just a sort of a non-verbal improvisation about leaving the room after dinner, after having dropped that big bombshell. I've never been more terrified of Brian. He just, he sat so still and then he just tapped on the table once, which was like, it was like a death knell. And for Shiv standing there going like, I really messed up here. And to then have to creep out with, uh, it was great. That kind of, you know, space to create and invent was really wonderful. What's surprising about the super rich? I think that they're not happy. <laughs> I mean, the more money you have, the more you have to maintain it, and the more your the expensive lifestyle just increases, and the more then you get worried that you're not going to keep up with that expense. So, if I was a billionaire, I'd have a chef because they can make me lots of lovely food. <laughs>